Hello, it's Walola Adipo here. This month, December, and throughout all the months that are included in the winter months, they are notoriously known to have recorded the largest amounts of depression, the cases of depression, and even self-mutilation, from self-harm to suicidality. I just want to encourage you as we move into the festive period where a whole bunch of people are celebrating and a whole bunch of things are happening. The human psyche suffers. Even if you do not have a pre-existing a pre mental health condition, usually as we move into the winter months in the West, the, the gene that codes for the proteins that move your serotonin neurotransmitter in and out of the synaptic, synaptic junctions, they are more active. So studies have shown that the serotonin transporter proteins are more active in the winter month. So that means you have less serotonin around, hanging around at the junctions of your synapses. So that means you're more likely to suffer from low mood and people with existing uh, depressive episodes could suffer uh, what we know as sad, you know, seasonal affective disorder. And depression is very common to the extent that the, the human biochemistry is distorted. So people feel very low. They feel guilty. They are overwhelmed with shame, a sense of, uh, a sense of loss and abandonment and they self-criticize more and some of these things they are they have more much more to do with their brain chemistry rather than the, de the defective self rather than the self that is not competent that is uh, that is defeated so a few thoughts as we navigate this festive period slash winter month which I will know can be very, very, very uh, devastating for other people. Number one is movement. Movement is critical to self-regulation. In fact, some studies have shown that the holy grail functionality of my brain is to initiate movement and to perpetuate movement. Yeah, movement of your energy system movement of your digestive system, movement of your sensory motor activities. And if movement is truncated, empowering chemicals are redundant. Think about it. Even though we're slowing down, you know, we're coming off the busy working schedules into the festive period, you actually want to have a plan where movement that is parasympathetic in nature is invoked. Regular walking exercises, whether it is running or walking, walking has been rated as the number one wellness exercise. So don't be sedentary. <laughs> We've got a lot to eat and less activity in the winter month. In the winter month. So what we want to do is to ensure that movement is activated. Also, the movement of the mind. While movement, physical movement benefits the body, psychological movement benefits the mind. And that is learning new things, learning something powerful, something motivational. Set yourself some goals or some good books to read, especially motivational books or spiritual books and do them early in the morning to set the pace for your day. Even if it's just 15 minutes every day, read something motivational, something inspiring, something hopeful, and that will create energy within you that can elevate your serotonin levels. And another thing I want to share with you is connection, connection, connection. We have a brain that is relational. We have a social brain. Even though there's a whole bunch of things going on, many people are isolated during the winter months because of the, the, the fact that it, it gets dark quicker 
um, in the West, people seem to be individualistic. In other words, they pursue their own genders, they pursue their own autonomy, and their own personal space. And that means there's not a lot of community going on. So how can we increase community? We know that the number one re resilience factor against mental health problems is co-regulation. What does that mean? Co-regulation means somebody that you trust, who gives you space, to speak your mind, to be heard, to be validated, to be witnessed. And it doesn't come cheap. Many people don't have that. Others can outsource that regarding getting a therapist, while some people can't afford it. So it's difficult. But if you're listening to me, you can afford a therapist. Make sure that when you're getting depressed, when the time of year when you're most vulnerable, you are co-regulated. I'm not saying that you should co-depend or you should move into a co-dependency, but I'm talking about co-regulation. Co-dependency is when two people are attracted to each other based on their common shame, common sense of helplessness. That is very common in uh, a traumatized mind where a, tra a traumatized person, somebody vulnerable, is attracted to another person vulnerable. And the attractive factor is the common, is the shared shame, shared sense of helplessness. And that is not good because eventually they will re traumatize each other. So co-regulation is a safe place where somebody who has the skills and the temperaments to make you feel safe is there to help you develop your own neural networks for safety and for, uh, for self-regulation. But for that to happen, you have to use the frontal lobes of the co-regulator as a way of feeling safe first until your own neural networks are fully developed and you can self-regulate better. So the key is to find connection. Connection. Whether you can figure out a way of getting a therapist or ensuring that loneliness is fought against. The join with what is join always what is happening. Even if you have to invite yourself, you know, indirectly to avoid being alone. Fight loneliness and ensure that your mind is engaged in movement, positive movement, and your body is engaged in positive activity. I'm Wale Ladipo. Uh, please, if you find this useful, share it. And if you want more regarding learning, get into our website right now, download the app, and start to browse some of the free resources and also some of the uh, online pre-recorded courses, recovery courses like OCD recovery, depression recovery, addiction recovery, and a whole bunch of other mental health conditions that we've documented. Speak to you soon.